In this lesson, we are going to learn how to perform hypothesis tests about a concerning a single proportion. So first, let's review how to write a null alternative hypothesis. So suppose we have the following situation. So we have a legislator who wonders whether more than half of the voters in her district favored a new law that would reduce the legal blood alcohol level that defines drunk driving. We suppose that P is the proportion of voters in the district who favor this lower limit. Write the null alternative hypotheses for this situation. So the null hypothesis would be that support is low, so the proportion who favor the proposal is less than or equal to 0.05. The or equal to always goes with the null hypothesis. AHA is that the proportion who favors this new legal limit is greater than 0.5. So in words, H0 is saying that 50% or fewer favor the lower limit. And HA says more than 50% favor the lower limit. And the question you'll be able to answer today is if you conduct a survey and get a sample proportion, is this sample proportion different enough from 0.05 to conclude that yes, people do support the lower limit? So the possible null alternative hypotheses are one of these following three choices, and the choice depends on the kind of question that you're asked. So in the first situation, you have some proposed value for p equals some null value. In the previous example, this p naught, which is called your null value, this was 0 0.5 in example 1. It doesn't have to be 0 0.5. It could be 0 0.2 or 0 0.1, but it is a proportion, so it's in between 0 and 1. So you have a proposed value for your proportion versus you just say your, purport, your proportion is not equal to that proposed value. This is called a two-sided test because you don't specify that you believe that your proportion is less than or greater than the null value. You just don't know which direction. You suspect that it's different. Okay, H naught P equals P naught versus you think your proportion is less than that null value. This is called a one-sided test. And number three is very similar. This is also a one-sided test. Now, to perform these hypothesis tests, we have to find something called the test statistic. So in this case, the test statistic is a Z, kind of like you used Z values for confidence intervals, your Z star multiplier. And the format of the, sample, the test statistic is as follows. You take your sample statistic minus your null value over the standard error of your null value. Or in this case, the sample statistic is going to be p hat, your sample proportion. The null value is p naught, and you divide that by the standard error of p naught. And as we learned in the previous chapter, the way to find null standard error is by using this formula. And this Z statistic, this Z test statistic, is a standardized Z score, which means it's measuring standard deviations. From a mean of zero. And things like your empirical rule apply. If you're more than two standard deviations away, probably something significant is happening. And this is going to measure the difference between the sample proportion p hat, so how different is that p hat from this null value? And a large difference suggests that these two are different.
or not P naught and P hat really it suggests that P naught and P are different, P being the unknown proportion that you don't know about. And if that's the case, you can decide in favor of your alternative hypothesis. All right, let's actually find a sample statistic. So for a sample size of 500, sample proportion P hat equals 0.3, you're testing the hypothesis P equals 0.2 versus P is actually greater than 0.2. And suppose you think that 20% of people are left-handed. That's what this is testing. And you take a sample and you find that 30% of your sample is left-handed. Is that unusual? Yes or no? So let's just gather all the things. So P naught, the null value, is this 0.2. We also need the standard error of P naught. So that's root P naught. 1 minus p naught over n, so root 0 0.2, 1 minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.8, over 500. This gives me 0 0.017889, and the z-score is sample statistic minus null value over standard error of null value. So 0.3 is my sample statistic, minus my null value of 0.2, divided by this standard error of 0 0.017889. If you use a lot of digits there, it'll make it more, your z-score more accurate, less liable for rounding error. And this gives you 5.59. So what this means is that a sample statistic of p hat equal 0.3, assuming we have the sample size of 500, is about 5.59 standard deviations above your mean of p naught equals 0.2. It's assuming that p naught equals 0.2 is true. If your proportion, population proportion really is 0.2, well then we are 5.59 standard deviations of this mean of the sample, and that's quite unlikely. And it suggests that the assumption that p naught equals 0.2 may be wrong. Because if you assume it, you get this, this sample that you have is so far above the mean, which suggests that probably the mean is actually higher. So we are going to actually quantify like how, how big of a z-score, or in some cases how small of a z-score is big enough or small enough to say with cert more certainty that yes, I'm going to reject this null hypothesis or I'm going to fail to reject this. So we are going to find a p-value. And how you do this, remember that the p-value is computed by asserting that the null hypothesis is true. So like in the previous example, we assume that our population proportion really was 0.2. And then we figure out how likely is a test statistic as extreme or more extreme than the observed test statistic. So for example, we had p hat equals 0.3. How extreme if really your true proportion is 0.2. So in the case we have H not saying something, H A saying something like P is greater than P naught, we find the probability that our Z is bigger than or equal to our value of Z star, where Z star is my test statistic. And it's useful to have a picture in your head of what you're doing. You're figuring out if you're at this z star value, 
what's the chances that you're either there or bigger? How likely is that? Okay, if your H A is P is less than P naught, you're finding the chances that Z was less than or equal to Z star. And in this case, probably you're going to have a low value of Z star, though not necessarily, and you're finding that area. And for a two-sided test, so something that says HA, like P, is not equal to P naught, you could be extreme in either direction. So what we're finding here is the probability that Z is either bigger than or equal to your test statistic, or that Z is less than or equal to your negative, your test statistic. And what that will look like in this picture is this. We're just going to assume that Z star is positive, so you don't have to fuss with anything, but it's in those two tails which note you can do by doing twice the probability that z is less than or equal to that negative z star. All right, let's actually compute some p-values. You will need your table of um, z-scores and probabilities. So find the p-value for each of the following situations. Specify the rejection level for alpha equals 0.1. So we're just going to say that we will reject female hypothesis if we get a p-value less than that, and we will fail to reject if our p-value is greater than or greater than or equal to that. Okay. So here we have a two-sided test. And we did some computations and found that our z statistic was 2.10. So the probability that z is either bigger than or equal to 2.10, or z is less than or equal to negative 2.10. And as a picture, this is what that looks like. It's 2.1, negative 2.1. So we need the area in both of those tails. Well, that's the probability that z is bigger than or equal to 2.10 plus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 2.10, which I'm going to find by doing twice the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 2.10. So looking at your table, 2.10 has a p-value of 0.0179 giving us 0 0.0358. And that should make sense with your empirical rule. We're a little more than two standard deviations away. And if we're two standard deviations away, the empirical rule tells us that 95% of the area is in between negative two and positive two. So we're a little bit further, so there should be a little bit less. And it's also pretty close to the 5%. All right, so here's my p-value and I reject my null hypothesis if your p is less than or equal to 0 0.01. Since this is not the case, we do not reject H0. At alpha equals 0 0.01 level of significance. All right, so next, suppose our z statistic is negative two, and we're testing the hypothesis that the proportion is equal to 0.6 versus it's less than 0.6. So because that HA says less than, we're finding the probability that z is less than or equal to our z statistic of negative 2.0. So in your picture, in the area to the left of negative 0.2.
and that won't require any complementing or anything. So this will just be from your straight from your table, 0 0.0228. And in this case, we do not reject H naught again at the alpha equals 0 0.01 level. All right, a z-statistic of 4.25. That should set off some warning bells because z-statistics that get bigger than two tend to be sort of significant. So H naught is P is 0.25. HA is that P is greater than 0.25. So we're saying, what's the chances that our z-score we get bigger than or equal to 4.25? Well, you can do this one of, so first let's get the picture. So the picture is this. You want the area from 4.25 up. Now your table gives you two options because it only goes from the value down. You have to either do one minus, probability z is less than or equal to 4.25, which will be, 1 minus, that 4.25 is in the, well, basic, it's kind of in the bottom of the thing that says in the extreme. You've got 4.26, which is close enough. 1 minus 0 0.99999, which is 0 0.12345, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. That's one way. Or, symmetry tells you that that area is the same as the area from negative 4.25 over. And this way is a bit faster because then you can just look at the other side of your table. In the extreme with negative 4.26, you get 0 0.00001. So when we're Conducting these z-tests, we need to make sure that the data meet the following conditions to make sure we don't sort of break any sort of statistical assumptions that are underlying our model. So first, the sample should be a random sample from the population, or the data should come from a binomial experiment with independent trials. And the quantities n p naught and n times 1 minus p naught should be both be at least 10. And this ensures that the number of observations in each category is at least 10. In each of the following, determine whether the conditions for conducting a z-test for a proportion are met, and if not, explain why not. So we have 20 students are randomly selected from the list of all sorority and fraternity members at a university. To determine if a majority of sorority and fraternity students favor a new policy on alcohol on campus. Suppose the hypotheses are as follows. So P equals 0.5 versus HA P is greater than 0.5. Note our null value here is 0 0.5. So we find N times P naught, which is 20 times 0.5 or 10. And we also find n times 1 minus p naught, which is 20 times 1 minus 0.5, which is also 10. So these numbers must be at least 10, and they are 10 exactly. So yes, the conditions are met, but barely. Suppose that instead we hypothesize that just, well, maybe more than 10% of these people believe this. So in this case, our null value is 0.1. Well, n p naught in this case is 20 times 0.1, which is just 2. And n times 1 minus p naught is 20 times 1 minus 0.1, or 18. So in this case, no, the conditions are not met. n p naught 
is equal to 2, which is less than 10. All right, now that we actually have the tools, let's actually do a hypothesis test with a real-life situation. So Time Magazine reported in 1994 that a survey of 507 randomly selected American adult Catholics, 59% answered yes to the question, do you favor allowing women to be priests? So one thing we might want to conclude is, do a majority of Catholics favor this? So set up the null alternative hypotheses for deciding whether more than half of American Catholics in 94 favored allowed, allowing women to be priests. So H0 would be that nothing is going on and the proportion that favor women being priests is equal to 0.5. So 50% of American Catholics support women in the priesthood. And HA is that there actually is support, or that the proportion who support this is in the majority. So P is bigger than 0.5. More than 50% support women in priesthood. All right, are the conditions necessary for using this Z statistic to test the hypotheses in A, are they met? So we need to compute NP naught. Well, our N was 507, so 507 times 0.59 comes out to be 299, and N times 1 minus P naught 507 times 1 minus 0 0.59 comes out to be 208. So, yes, both n p naught and n 1 minus p naught are greater than 10. Next, you get to the bread and butter, which is actually finding the test statistic. So remember that the test statistic is a z-score, and it's found using your sample statistic minus your null value over standard error of null value. I like to start by finding this standard error of null value first, because it requires a little bit of work. So that's p naught 1 minus p naught over n. And in this case, our null, the, our null proportion is 0.5. So 0.5 times 1 minus 0.5 over our n, which is 507. This comes out to be 0 0.022361. So our z-score is, so p hat, well that's the 59% who answered yes to the question, 0 0.59, minus the null value of 0.5, divided by this standard error. And this comes out to give us a z-value of 4.024. So what that tells you is that your sample proportion of 0.59 is 4.024 standard deviations above the mean when you assume the null value is 0.5, given your sample size of 507. Okay, find the p-value for this test. So we want the probability that z is bigger than or equal to 4.02. So in a picture, you know, there on up, 
Well, I'm going to change that to probability z is less than or equal to negative 4.02. And you look at your table and you're like, Arg, no 4.02 there. So let's talk about how to do this with technology and also with the table. So with the table, you look at the in the extreme portion and you see that you have negative 3.72 and negative 4.26. So from the table, you can conclude that your p-value is smaller than the p-value for the negative 3.72. 0 0.0001. So that corresponds to a z of negative 3.72, but it's bigger than the z for the negative 4.26 because that z value falls in between those two z values. Your p value is also going to fall in between there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So if you were on a test, that's what you would say. You'd say, my p-value is in between these two things. In Excel, what you type in is this. Norm, dist, and then you put in what your z-value is. So in our case, we have norm, dist, and you put in negative 4.02 which gives you 0 0.000029, which is indeed in that range. So one thing I may ask you to do on a homework assignment is to do both of these, to both tell me what you get from the table, because you have to do your test that way. But in real life, you'll have to actually compute these values using Excel or something similar, like you can use a different thing. But that's how you would find it. And you can check that you're right by seeing does this number fall within the interval, and yes it does, 0 0.4029 is bigger than 0 0.401. It's also less than 0 0.30 and 1. Okay, on the basis of the p-value, make a conclusion for this situation. Use level of significance alpha equals 0 0.05. Write the conclusion both in statistical language and in words that someone with no training in statistics would understand. Okay, so we are going to, first of all, we reject H0 in favor of HA. We can conclude that a majority, as in more than 50% of American Catholics, Supported women in the priesthood at that time, so in 1994. Now let's also talk about how this confidence interval stuff relates to the hypothesis test. Because we also did something sort of similar with confidence intervals, and we were able to say, well, the value we think is true isn't covered by our confidence interval and therefore it's unlikely and we're just going to reject it. So let's see if the confidence interval supports the conclusion. So let's find a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of American Catholics who favored allowing women to become priests. And does this interval support the conclusion that a majority of American Catholics in 94 favored allowing women to be priests? So 95% CI is found using your sample statistic plus or minus your z-score times the standard error of your sample statistic. Since we have a 95% confidence interval, we can just take z star equal to 2. The standard error of p hat is, well, root p hat, 1 minus p hat over n which in this case is 0.59, 1 minus 0.59 over 507, or 0 0.022. So 
So our 95% confidence interval is 0.59 plus or minus 2 times 0 0.022 or 0.59 plus or minus 0 0.044, which comes out to be 54.6% to 63.4%. And so does this interval support the conclusion that more than half of all Catholics favor Lewin v. Priest? And this is yes, as the interval falls above. this does support the conclusion. All right, suppose you did a two-sided test for a proportion and you got a p-value of 0.07. Using the usual alpha equals 0.05 criterion for hypothesis testing, would you conclude that the population proportion was different from the null hypothesis? So we have P equals 0.07 and a cutoff value of alpha equals 0.05. And you ask, is P less than or equal to alpha? And the answer is no. So in this case, we would fail to reject H0. as 0 0.07, which is our p-value, is bigger than 0 0.05. And just recall that that 0 0.07 comes from this bell-shaped curve and looking at the area underneath it on in both of those tails. So suppose instead that the test had been a one-sided test and the sample proportion was in the direction to support the alternative hypothesis, which means if HA was P is greater, you actually got a, a P that was greater than your null value. Using this same criterion, would you be able to decide in favor of HA? Well, in this case, since we had a one-sided test, we only have one of those tails, so the p-value would have been 0.07, divided by 2, or 0 0.035. So in this case, we would actually reject H0. So it is important to decide whether or not you want to do a one-sided or two-sided test. Usually researchers have some direction that they think the proportion is going, so you pick a test. Now our final example is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a hypothesis test with a binomial random variable, and we will use technology here. So you have a multiple choice test, and it consists of 50 questions with four choices each. The teacher wants to test the hypothesis that a student is just guessing versus the hypothesis that the probability of a correct answer in each question is higher than it would be if they were guessing. So what is the parameter of interest? Well, the parameter of interest is the chances of guessing correct, which is the probability. So the probability P of a correct answer on each guess. And the null hypothesis, H0, is that that P is equal to 0.25. And HA is that this is higher. P is bigger than 0.25. And now the question is, the question that all college students and high school students ask, how, because it's multiple choice, can you get lucky by just guessing? And the answer to that is no, so you should study. But if a student chooses a correct answer on half of the questions, 
how likely is that to be due to chance? So this is a binomial random variable with probability of success 0.25 and 50 trials. So what's the chances that somebody gets more than 25 guesses correct? Well, that's 1 minus probability that they get 24 or less correct, which using technology is 1 minus binome dist is the thing you can put into Excel. 24, so that's this number, 50 trials, success probability 0.25, and true meaning that you have this less than or equal to. That's 1 minus 0 0.999877, which is 0 0.000122. So the chances of somebody getting more than half correct, if they're just guessing, are quite small. All right, so we found P was equal to 0 0.000122. So that's the probability of getting this score or higher by just guessing, which is very low. So we conclude that the person was probably not guessing. As the probability of getting a 25 or better by guessing alone is quite low.